Before we start working on our watercolour picture, it's always a good idea to do a warm up getting to know some different watercolour techniques. And these techniques will really help you when we go and do our picture of our daffodil, which we're going to be doing in the next lesson. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you have got everything that you need. Um, I've found some jars from my house and I've filled them both with some clean water. Got a little bit of kitchen paper there to help me. Some watercolours. Now watercolours come in all sorts of different forms and you might have some watercolours that are in tubes. They're just as good, in fact probably even a little bit better. Um, I have here my watercolour paints and um, a watercolour uh, and I've got, I'm using, I'm going to use the lid here to mix my watercolours but you might have a palette which would actually be a little bit better but I'm going to use the lid because I know most of you will have that. And I've got a lid here, and this, this lid is actually a, a lid from a milk bottle and some tissue paper, or I've got kitchen roll. We're going to wrap that around later to do a particular technique called lifting. So I've got here my paper, and I have divided it into six, and I've done that by drawing a line down the middle, and I've drawn two other lines down there and divide them into six. It doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry about that. And the other thing to make sure that you've got is a brush, a watercolour brush. It doesn't matter really how thick or thin it is, um, but try and take very good care of your brush. That's, um, you've got to treat your watercolour brushes really delicately because we need to make sure that these bristles all stay in a really nice point as much as possible. Now, we're going to, the first technique that I'm going to do, I'll write it here for you so you can see. The first technique that I'm going to use is, is a technique called a flat wash. Now a flat wash is really, really good if you're going to be doing some backgrounds, um, some, maybe some sky scene, things like that. It's really good to fill your paper up with a wash. Now I've got two jars here, as I've said. One is going to be for cleaning my brush, and then I'm going to keep one jar for dipping um, my brush into the water when I am getting ready to paint. So the first thing that you need to do is we need to uh, create a create a nice pool of watercolour here. Now I'm going to do that by dipping my paint, paint uh, brush into the water and dipping it into the paint, and it's really quite good. You could, I, I do something called tunneling, where I'm just really using the tip of my brush, and really we want as much paint as possible. So a nice big pool of paint, and you want to make it as watery as possible. So dilute that paint as much as possible, so you've got a nice, nice bit of paint there um, ready to paint with. So I've got my paint. You might not want to choose red, you might want to choose another colour. And actually it'd probably be really useful to think of the colours in the book that we have been using. So we, we're looking at Winter's Child and there's lots of different blues in there. So I might do that for my next one. So I've got a little bit of paint there. That doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. This is just for practicing. So the first thing we're going to do is our flat wash. So for the flat, flat wash, we're going to dip our paintbrush into some water and into the paint, load it up with paint, and we're actually just going to drag it across, drag it across, and then each time you want to dip it into some water and drag it across, drag it across. I'm going to dip it again into some water and I'm going to drag it across. And as you can see, there's lots of, lots of paint on my brush. And each time I'm going to dip it into paint and drag it across, and that is a flat wash. Okay, and I'm going to fill my paint, and it's, it's all pretty much the same colour. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly, all pretty much the same, same colour. So I've got my flat wash. That is the first technique that we're going to do. And it's a really easy one to, to fill up that, uh, that paper with as much um, water as much as colour as possible. So remember, actually, I'm going to clean it in this water. So this is the brush. Each time you do, try and make sure your brush is nice and clean. You might want to just check if it's still showing the colours on the on the paper there, then I'll clean this a little bit more, and then it's nice and clean there. So I'm going to leave my brush there. And the next technique that we're going to do is a technique called a graded wash. 
Now this grated wash is used um, really good for skies, also for sunsets and things like that, where you want the top of your scene to be a darker colour and it's going to gradually get lighter and lighter. So I'm going to just write here that we are doing a graded wash here. Okay, and then that will be our next technique. I might choose a different colour for my graded wash or I might choose to do the same colour and that's totally up to you, you can choose as well, it really doesn't matter, again if you want to choose the blues from the Winter's Child that would be really lovely to see those different shades of blues um, in a graded wash or you might want to choose the greens of spring, so uh, totally up to you, I'm going to, just because I've already mixed it, I'm going to stick with my reds and I'm just going to mix a little bit more into there um, and then once I have done that, and mix a little bit more, make sure you've got lots and lots there. Once I have done that, I am going to start my graded wash. So I'm going to start by um, getting a nice amount on my brush, and I'm going to do another line across here. And actually, I want it a little bit darker than that, so I'm just going to add a little bit more paint because I want my first bit to be a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm going to go over that again. Can you see how that's now a little bit darker? Okay, so that's my first bit of my graded wash. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm not going to actually add too much paint each time. I'm going to add some water. And then I'm going to take the top bit and I'm going halfway. And you can see that I've just gone over halfway. So I'm going to do it again. And I'm just going to feed into this um, paint and I'm going to go over there. And just with the water, I'm going to bring that paint down. So I'm going to drag it by the side and I'm going to bring the paint colour down. And as I drag it, each time I'm going to go over half of it, so I'll be dragging some of that paint. As I drag it, you can see that the colour gets lighter and lighter and lighter until you can hardly see it at the bottom. And it's a lovely gradual effect. So that's a graded wash. Okay, if ever you need to pause this video because I might be going a little bit quick or anything like that for you, just pause it um, and catch up with me and then you can play again and you'll, you will keep together that way, which will be really good and then you won't be worried. So the next technique that I'm going to teach you is something called wet on wet. And I love this technique because I love the fact that actually you're not 100% sure what it's gonna look like until you do it. So I'm gonna write that there wet on wet okay so this is i'm just going to move my tissue out of the way this is a lovely technique and it might be quite nice to have um a a, a few different colors i'm going to clean my brush there and i'm going to dip it in i'm going to do some blues just for winter's child because i'm going to, I'm going to get some different shades of blue and you might want to do the same as well so you can get some different shades of blue so i'm going to dip my brush in and get some different shades of blue here. So I've got a, starting with quite a darker blue. I'm gonna make sure I've got lots of paint in there. So I've got a nice dark blue. And you might want to add a little bit of water. And then I'm going to, oh, clean my brush. See, even I forget which one's which sometimes. Sometimes if you forget so much, you might need to just, um, clean your water and start again. I have to do that sometimes, so this one's for dipping here. So mixing your colours. So you've got lots of different colours. I might do, I might do a little bit of a, uh, I, a green? I might do a little bit of a green as well. I'm going to make it quite a bluey green, so I'm going to start with blue and then I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to dip in some green to see if we can make a kind of greeny, greeny blue. I quite like that. There we go. Got quite a nice greeny blue here. Might add a little bit of blue there as well. So these are some of my different colours that I am going to use for my technique. Okay, so wet on wet. So wash my brush. Okay, now the, the important thing to remember is you want your paper to be nice and wet for this to happen. So you want your paper to be lovely and wet for it to work. So dip your brush, load it up with water, and then 
wipe that water all over your paper so it's a lovely, nice and soaked in. So all of that square is nice, nicely soaked in. So make sure it's nice and wet, ready to do this technique. Once you're happy that you've got a nice wet um, paper, you kind of need to start working there. So I'm going to dip my brush in and I'm going to start with my blues and I'm going to put a blue on and we'll see what happens. And as you can see, I love it. So you can see that the blue just spreads and it starts to really spread out a little bit like a firework. And so you can actually put a little bit more on. I'm gonna put a little bit more on because I want I want to see that blue spreading and you might want to add a little bit more blue to it if you do. And I'm gonna see, can you can see it kind of spreading out. You can start playing a little bit and playing with that colour spreading out. And then if you want to, you can start changing some colours and seeing what happens. So I'm going to add a bit of a lighter blue and just see what happens as they kind of drop in. You might even want to see if you can, it depends how wet your paint is. I might add a little bit of that green now and just have a play, have a play on yours and see kind of what happens and what effects you can make. You might want to get a slightly darker colour and just have a little go and see kind of what effects you can create. You might want to add a different, um, there you go, that's, that's a much darker blue there. So and actually it looks, <laughs> I mean, I was going for the winter effect, but I love the light green going through that. It looks a little bit like the spring shoots trying to come up, it doesn't it, in the, in the blue sky. So uh, have a think about what you might want to do. You can, you can experiment with colours as well because you can add, I'm going to add a little bit of red in and see what happens. Little, little pops of red. Oh look, that could be like my, now it's suddenly looking more like a spring picture, isn't it? With like flowers, little flowers that you can kind of see everywhere. So have a little go and have it, see it spreading around and see what effect you can make. It might be like a fireworks picture, um, lots of nice colours and just spreading around. So that is wet on wet. Have fun with that one. I hope you enjoy that one a lot. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm gonna put my brush down. And the next one is where you're going to need your bottle top, your bottle top here, and your paper. So your tissue paper. Now the thing that you might want to do here, thing to do here is you wrap it round. Just so you've got a lovely, lovely surface here to press down. Because what you're going to do is you're going to, we're going, it, this technique's called lifting. And we're going to lift the paint up. And we're going to do it using this bottle top. So I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Um, and I will just make sure that we know that's where we're doing it. We're going to do lifting in this box here. And lifting up, oh, I might even like lifting, lifting up. The lifting up tip technique, you want to start with a wash. Okay, you want to start with a nice wash on. I think I'm gonna go blue, so I'm gonna mix a little bit more of my blue. I'm gonna make sure I've got a clean brush. Yes, I've got a clean brush. I'm gonna dip it in water, and I'm going to mix a lot more of my blue. So I'm gonna have a blue wash here. A little bit like Winter's Child. So I'm going to have a blue wash. I'm gonna just hold that, because that's rattling around quite a lot, isn't it? Okay, make sure you've got plenty of paint before you start painting. You don't really want to start and then run out because it's quite, quite nice to make sure you've got plenty of paint. Okay, so I'm going to do a flat wash just like I did up here. So I'm going to make sure that I've got lots of water on my brush and I'm going to do a flat wash. And you remember with a flat wash, we're just dragging it along, dragging it along each time, okay? Now I'm going to get, I might want a little bit of water each time. Oh dear, can you see that? Well, this is where lifting up would actually, is actually quite useful. I'm just gonna get my tissue. It doesn't matter because watercolor does, look, can you see that? I've just fixed it straight away. So if you make mistakes, don't panic, everyone does. Um, just try and do what I'm not doing, is making sure your brush does it. You don't have to go over your, your paper too much. Okay, so I'm going to do the next bit here. My flat wash. We need to work fairly quickly because we want it nice and wet. We want it um, to be fairly wet for when we're doing our lifting up technique. Okay, so I've got my flat wash here. Making a little bit of 
of mist today, aren't I? I'm just gonna go over there because I just felt it needed a little bit more. My flat brush. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna wash my brush. It's a really real skill to try and keep your area as clean as possible. Um, something that I am failing to do a little bit here. I'm hoping it's because I'm trying to talk on the screen as well as painting. Okay, so I'm going to get my, this ready to do it. You've got to do it while it's still quite wet. And you're going to just push it there and press down really hard. Press down really hard and then lift it up. And as you can see, it's lifted up some of that paint. And I hope you can see it well there. It kind of looks a little bit like a moon in the sky. So I quite like that for maybe one of our scenes of Winter's Child. You've got um, a lovely sky and then you've got the moon shining. That's a really nice what technique of doing it. And you're lifting up that wet paint. So it soaks into this tissue paper and it lifts it up. Really lovely technique and it means that you can be, you know, shows that with watercolour it does come up, so please don't worry. We're on to our next technique and the next technique that we're going to do is we're going to do some thin lines. Okay, look, I'm using our handwriting a little bit better with this one. Thin lines. So this is where we might want to draw. So we wouldn't do it straight onto these because these are still wet, but we would have to wait until they're completely dry. And then actually we can be a little bit more precise and draw, draw, um, might want to draw some uh, trees or some, yeah, some trunks or some grass or something like that, or some icicles, all sorts of things like that. Um, and that, that's where you want some thin lines. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna rinse my brush. And I think I'm going to, uh, uh, actually I think I'll do it with the green because we might want some thin lines of green. So I'm going to just make that, just get that a little bit more. Maybe that, maybe we're gonna use, we could use that if we we're doing some spring painting or you might have it for your, for your trunks of your trees. Um, okay, so, right, just get my brush ready. Now with thin lines, they're useful for drawing trees, they're useful for drawing. Um, you need to load it with diluted um, diluted paint, but kind of make sure you haven't got too much on there, okay? So kind of just, just make sure you haven't got too much on. And really the technique here is to have a go at just dragging your brush down really lightly and trying to see if you can be a little bit more precise, so drawing lines there. So we're just gonna drag it from top to bottom and just practicing drawing lines. If you press a little bit harder, the lines become a little bit thicker. So um, it's up to you how you do it, dragging it, drawing lines, okay? And just having a go at being a little bit more precise. Um, you probably don't need as much water with this one. So you can probably just go straight into your diluted paint and just practice all over your paper drawing lines. If you're struggling, don't worry because you can always do it with a felt tip pen. Um, drawing on watercolour, it's quite nice, a little bit of mixed media there. But also there's another tip here, you could do a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom and then when you've, when you've done that you can actually just drag it to join those two dots together, okay? So you could do a dot, a dot to make it sure they're a bit thinner than the first one I did. There we go, that's better, that one isn't it? So dot, dot and drag. So really just fill this piece of paper up with lots of thin lines. That's all we're ask, asking you to do, just practicing. Some people find it easier to keep their hand on the, um, the table there. And so you're just moving that part of your hand. Can you see what's happening there? Just moving that part of your hand. Other people find it easier to do a little bit higher. So see what works for you and just practice doing all those thin lines. Okay, all right, I'm gonna wash my brush. Just check, yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to put it down there, ready for my last technique. Okay, and then our water, our, our watercolor warm up is finished and we can move on to our next lesson. Okay, so this last technique is called, let's see if I can do better handwriting for this one as well. It's called, it's one of my favorites actually. It's called the scribbling technique. So I'll just write scribbling there, it's called scribbling. Okay, and this is where you basically, it feels a little bit like you're writing with the paint, which I really like. Um, so scribbling technique. So you're gonna grab your brush, um, choose the color that you want to do with. I'm gonna stick with my green, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna yeah, wash my brush. I might make a little bit more green up there. Just make sure I've got lots and lots of green to work with. And then, 
basically making sure that you've got enough diluted paint on your brush, you're going to just have a bit of fun moving that brush around and seeing what shapes, it's a little bit like writing as you can see, see what kind of shapes you can make and it's you really kind of just move, making small movements that you can actually end up colouring quite a lot of area with it. It's a little bit more precise there, you might want to get a little bit darker. You can go over it a little bit darker if needed. Okay, and then you can, you can have a look at what kind of shapes you can do with this scribbling technique. So, um, one thing you might want to do, look, it looks a little bit, if I start there and then go up there, can you see how it starts looking like, it looks a little bit like a Christmas tree actually, a pine tree in a pine forest. So yeah, you can just have a look and see kind of what techniques you could do, oh, this is like my, my grass, my daffodil, daffodil stalks coming up, growing out of the ground for Winter's Child. Just have a little look, I might try and do another tree while I'm here. Little triangular point there, and then I'm going to bring it down. I get a bit more paint. Bring it down a little bit further noise that you keep hearing with the sign behind me, it keeps falling down, which is great. Oh, there it goes, it's fallen onto the ground, if you can hear that. Okay, and just practice scribbling all over your paper there, just to get used to it. Now remember, clean your brush at the end. It's strange, isn't it, because the water's blue, but actually, look, See, it cleans my brush beautifully. If ever you feel, especially when you're working with thin lines, that your brush is, is starting to spray out, splay out a bit, um, or if ever you think your brush is starting to lose its point, you can use your fingers. Make sure you do it on a clean brush. You can use your fingers to create that point again. And then, yeah, you can see it's a lovely point there. So, have fun. Practice, practice, practice. That's the thing with watercolours. It's the thing with everything, really. The more we practice, the better we become with that. That's it. That's the introduction to watercolour techniques. It's our warm-up, really. Um, and you need to leave that to dry. As you can see, especially my wet on wet. It's quite, quite wet at the moment. So leave it to dry before you move it. Um, but well done. Well done for keeping up with me. We're going to use our watercolour techniques in the next lesson so make sure that you're watching and uh, hopefully you will have learned some things with this one and I can't wait to see your finished pictures after tomorrow's lesson. Bye bye!